All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the show. It's good to be with you. Um, today, I have an episode with another um, guy who's a content creator, videographer, photographer, and hunter. Um, you may not know his name, but I can almost guarantee you've seen some of his work. He's he's filmed for Brian and Ryan Lampers uh, with Gritty. He's done a lot of work with Mountain Ops. Uh, he's filmed a lot of cool hunts with Go Hunt. Um, as well as loophole. So um, one of the most accomplished guys in the photo video world as far as hunting, even though he's a young guy, he's only 26 years old, um, but uh, amazing dude, uh, believer, and we had a really just natural, flowing, awesome conversation. Uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Um, I guess this week is Luke Duesenberry. So if you haven't seen his work before, or you don't know you've seen it, but you probably have seen it, but um, if you're curious, you can look him up on Instagram, Luke.Duesenberry, uh, D-U-S-E-N-B-U-R-Y, um, and you'll see he's an amazing photographer. So we talk about um, you know his journey into the hunting industry and photography and videography, but also you know the stuff we hit on really applies to any industry or any kind of work you're in or personal goals you may have. So um, even if you're not in photography and video and stuff, this is a really good conversation. Like I said, he's a believer, so we touch on some really good spiritual um, topics. And so that verse that um, we mentioned is Mark one. 12 and it's right after Jesus got um, baptized and it says and immediately the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tested by Satan and he was with the wild animals and the angels ministered to him and we just talk about how um, you know God uses uh, wilderness whether it be actual literal wilderness or you know even as some people like to say wilderness times or desert times in our life um, to, uh, to speak to us and to form us. And he uses adversity to speak to us and form us. And that's kind of the theme of this podcast. We talk about some different challenging situations um, on hunts and in life that um, led Luke to this path that he's on and have led me to the path that I'm on. So um, again, even if you're not into photo and video, it's a really interesting conversation just about life. And um, Luke's a great guy. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy this episode. So if you like what we're doing here at the podcast, please take a minute to uh, leave me a rating or review on Apple Podcasts and uh, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. And please check out the the film I just did from Kodiak. Me and Luke talk about it a little bit. It's my first hunt film ever. Uh, it aired on Brian Call's Gritty YouTube channel, but it's also on my YouTube channel. And I hope you will go subscribe to that YouTube channel. Uh, you can just search The Hunter's Quest or my name, Hunter McWaters, on YouTube. Um, and also, um, give me a follow on Instagram at The Hunter's Quest. And I'll, um, I'm pretty available there, too, if you have any questions or want to reach out. So... Anyway, I uh, appreciate your support, and let's just jump into this episode with Luke. Enjoy. All right, so I'm here today with my guest on his debut podcast appearance, Luke Duesenberry. How's it going, man? It's going well. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, man. Uh, you were sharing with me earlier that uh, you had a late night editing, so thanks for thanks for coming on, man. What were you working on? Yeah, I I was actually working on a really really cool project that I was I did last month um, over in Oregon. Mm -hmm. One of my good buddies from college, um, whose name is also Luke Luke Jackson. Oh, nice. um, he's one of my day one buddies from college, and we we shot a music video together in college, but it was like one of those like I don't know, just totally for fun. Yeah. My buddy who's a musician wrote this song like literally like three hours the night before. And we're like, let's shoot a music video to it and like <laughs> put it in the school film festival. So that's what we did. Oh, nice. Um, so then, you know, fast forward to, you know, three years, four years down the road to now, um, I've had contact with this band called the Talbot Brothers. Um, they're based in um, the Portland area. Mm -hmm. And we just started talking last year about doing some sort of music video project and you know, and then time came, they're like, okay, we want, we would like to do one, you know? And so cool. I was like, I'd love to hire my buddy Luke to help me. Cause we've done music videos together before. And he's just like a really creative guy. Yeah. Um, when it, especially when it comes to like story, mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to do like a really story focused music video this time. Cool. So him and I just like collabed it out, storyboarded it for several days, just 
FaceTime and just be like, what if we did this? What if we did that? And then basically got a storyboard together, pitched nice. it to the band, and they're like, heck yeah, sounds great. <laughs> they were they were super chill, like through all of it. Yeah. Um, and we shot the whole thing in one day, like one, like from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. day. Mm-hmm. And it rained the whole day on the Oregon coast. And <laughs> it was awesome. Um, also, I a huge shout out to my friend Lauren Lynch. Um, his grandmother's house burned down Ooh. and she has a house over on the coast. And that's mm-hmm. actually where we ended up filming it. Um, mm-hmm. The song kind of deals with the themes of like a relationship of some sort ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they were like, the band was like, the only thing we kind of want is like an apocalyptic feel. And so we were like, what if it was like a personal apocalypse? Like, you know, but it's somewhat semi ambiguous of like, did this guy like, did his house burn down? Did he burn it down? Did yeah. she burn it down or whoever burned it? Like, is it even a real house? Like we kind of just wanted to be like metaphorical, but also like pretty like, whoa, like, yeah, no, that's cool, man. Cool. It feels real, but yeah. Anyway, looking, yeah. So we were up late finishing that. So yeah, looking forward to seeing that, man. You'll have to share it when uh when you guys when it releases and everything. Definitely. But, yeah, um, it should be out, I think, next week at the sweet. latest. So cool, man. Well, um, yeah, man. This is the first time we've ever spoken. We talked a little bit on social, but um but yeah, like where where are you from, man? Um, what's kind of your background? What's your story? Yeah, so I'm from Southern Oregon. Okay. a little town of Ashland. Um, mm-hmm. grew up there for the first few years of my life. And then my parents moved out to central point, which is just outside of Medford. Um, grew up there on both my grandparents' ranch in Ashland. And then my family actually rented a ranch, um, in the central point Sam's Valley area. Uh-huh. And so I always grew up, you know, in the outdoors. My dad was super into hunting and cowboy stuff. Um, nice. my dad, my dad's always had horses and, oh, um, cool. I was pretty like, I don't know, from an early age exposed to like the outdoors and hunting. And like my dad got me and both my sisters, um, Red Rider BB guns for our first oh, Christmas. Dude, that was my so first firearm as well. Yeah. At six months old. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I was always walking around the farm, you know, shooting robins and yeah. I don't know, little birds and stuff just for fun and shoot my little recurve bow down at, down at the barn and stuff. But, um, so yeah, I grew up in just like a rural community um dad loved hunting i honestly for the first probably 12 years of my life i didn't love hunting it kind of it was hard for me like i I was one of those kids like my feet hurt my back hurt like yeah i I didn't really get the funness of it for right probably probably until about like late middle school high school when i killed my first buck my my first buck but yeah it was but like i look back at those memories i have now with my dad like on the farm, you know, like helping them with the cows and irrigation pipes and, you know, and seeing animals like on the farm. I always thought that was cool. Like mm-hmm. just seeing animals, but, um, yeah, the, the hunting part of like, you know, hiking long days, sleeping on the top of a mountain in a tent. I remember as a kid, I was just like, dad, why are we doing this? Like, you know, <laughs> but it's so funny, like looking back now, like, I'm just so grateful that he instilled that into me and, um, yeah. you know, yeah, because I, you know, I grew up hunting as well with my dad, but it was mainly like in a duck blind or in a field goose hunting. He started me off dove hunting. So, um, I, yeah, like it sounds like some of those memories as a kid might be like they were kind of rough, but at the same time, like you just learn so much just about camping and backpacking and just boots and everything, you know, that that's pretty cool that you got that start like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah super so. thank you, my dad. So when did um you know so if people don't know who are listening, um you know I'll do a little intro. But you're a very talented photographer, videographer. You know your stuff's been you've done projects with Go Hunt and Loophole and um, Gritty. Um, you know your stuff's all over the place, and it's it's really good stuff. And um, so when did when did kind of photo and video sort of enter your life? When did how did that whole thing start? Yeah. So I'm like growing up, I never really did photography or anything. I was pretty, I don't know. I was pretty, I loved, I always loved the outdoors. Um, but like through middle school and high school kind of transitioning into that period of my life, I was really into baseball, mm-hmm. really into sports. Um, still like would go hiking, go to the lake, go, you know, do whatever. I was still went hunting with my dad, but it was more like a once a year, twice a year, maybe kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I shot two blacktail bucks in high school. 
um, shot. I, I killed my first spike elk in college. And those were all like just on weekend trips, you know, yeah. and just like one, one weekend of the year, um, hunting with my dad and my uncles. Mm. Um, so I never really like, I would say had the total itch for hunting. Um, I just like, I really appreciated it and enjoyed it. Um, obviously love the meat aspect of it too. Like <laughs> I share that with my college coaches and uh, a couple of my college teammates um, when I killed my first elk and they were super stoked. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like sharing meat with people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say photography, I literally had no interest really at all. And, um, until my, the end of my freshman year of college, starting in my sophomore year of college. Mm. And it was kind of an interesting year for me. Um, actually, no, it was, it was, sorry. It was in between my sophomore year and my junior year of college. Okay. And how, my sophomore how old are you? Year, so I'm 26. Oh, okay. I turn wow. 27 next month. So oh, that's cool. You got a long, yeah. you got a long career heavy, man. That's cool. That like, it took me a while to find, you know, it, I feel like God had me on a path where I was blessed and I learned a lot of really cool stuff and like the skills I have, um, you know, everything happens for a reason, but, um, you Absolutely. Know, I, it's pretty cool that you have found something you're very talented at and love, you know, at a young age. I appreciate that. Yeah. I just have been very, very blessed. Um, and that, that really like for me goes back into like what I was talking about, like in between my sophomore and junior year of college, um, just, I went through the, the season of life where I ended up blowing out my knee, mm. uh, tore my meniscus and had a few other, um, tears in there. Um, and I was, and I was my, sorry, let me back up. Um, so I ended up blowing out my knee, um, my sophomore year of college and, it was kind of a, a really big transitional point for me in my life. I really had really invested my identity in baseball. Mm. Um, and like how, because that was just such a big part of my life for like the six years leading up to college, you know, sure. I just, I played year round and, you know, I just, all my friends were mostly through baseball and, you know, it just, it just was such a huge part of my life. Um, yeah. and then to have that knee surgery, um, and just that whole injury, um, that whole season of life, my sophomore year of college, just really kind of like, I think God used that to reset, um, my identity and also mm. just like a few other things in my life that I just think that maybe weren't the best, um, mm. not to like fully elaborate, but I just, I just think that God really used that season, um, my sophomore year to redirect me, um, on a new path. Cool. And, uh, yeah, so he takes what the enemy my... meant for evil and turns it for good. Right. Exactly. And even though like at the time I was like, so confused, upset, like frustrated, I was just, I remember having a lot of like spiritual battles with God. Like, you know, why did this knee thing happen? Like, I don't even know mm -hmm. if I'm going to play baseball again. And that was just such a big part of like my schooling, like my scholarship, like yeah. I was like, I go to a different school if I can't play, like, I don't know, you know, the devil just uses all those negative thoughts to mm -hmm. attack when you go through a season like that. And I remember like, as I was just literally starting to walk again from crutches was when the school year ended. So I, so it's kind of like an interesting, I don't know, metaphor. Like I, I went home that summer and it was just starting to like, you know, walk without crutches again, hobble around, walk without pain, do my rehab the whole summer. And my plan was just to hang out, hang out and Southern Oregon with my parents, low key. And, yeah. you know, just kind of do whatever, just maybe do like a, a part-time job somewhere. Um, but my parents ended up buying me a GoPro uh, hmm. for my birthday. All and, started with a GoPro, huh? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, I feel like it's a story for a lot of people. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just, I had played with one the summer before at Lake Shasta with my buddy, Eric. And cause he had one and I was like, dude, this thing is so fun. Like, we were just like taking little, you know, dumb videos of us yeah. swimming, cliff jumping, wakeboarding, whatever. And I was like, yeah, it's like super fun. And I, I think his at the time was like a hero three or it might've even been like a hero two, mm -hmm. uh, super early in the GoPro days. But, um, but yeah, so my parents got me a GoPro for my birthday and I don't know, I just started playing with it and taking it on a hikes. And I don't know. I just, I felt like, like right away I was like, well, this is like really fun not mm. only like taking pictures, but also like having a quote unquote, like excuse to go take photos right. and hang out with 
buddies and be like, Hey, like, you want to go check out this waterfall? Hey, like you want to go yeah. hike up the mountain and like take pictures at sunset, but also just like hang out. And yeah. it was, and kind of going back to like, just like that season of like, just trial and like, just frustration with God and this injury I was going through and like the healing of that, like, it was kind of a way for me to like, get out, like an escape. Mm. Um, but all, but like, but not like in a bad way, but like, just get out and just like feel refreshed, like yeah. have like closer relation with, with friends and with God and in his creation That's awesome. and then just use like a GoPro to like, kind of tell the story of that along the way. Um, whether it's, you know, hanging out at the lake or going on a cool backpacking trip or a road trip. Um, and I was just, I don't know, I, I noticed very quickly that summer that like the photos and videos I was taking on these fun little trips that, you know, we're supposed to just be super lighthearted. Like I could, I started posting on my Instagram and I just noticed that like, it really blessed people mm. and people like would comment like, Oh, this is like so cool. Or, and like, you know, the friends I would go with would love the pictures, you know, from the trips and be like, yeah, like, it's so cool, you know, to have this, like to remember, yeah. you know, going to Lake Tahoe and going, you know, swimming or whatever. Um, so yeah, I just very early on, I just felt like this very like positive, like affirmation, like in my heart about photography. Hmm. Um, and I just really felt like God put maybe not the GoPro necessarily, but he put like photography and yeah, totally. like being in the outdoors with, with friends and connecting people and like just telling these like cool stories, you know, on a very like low key, like level, mm -hmm. um, he just put that like passion on my heart, like that summer and some like cool, like highlights from that summer that I just kind of laugh about now um, when I, when I say them, but like, like two of the photos I took with my GoPro, um, GoPro ended up buying through like the rewards <laughs> program. And I remember, awesome. I remember like, I saw like a, an ad on Instagram for the rewards program. So I was like, I'm going to like submit a couple of my photos and I took this one photo, like I hiked up this mountain above Medford and like stuck my GoPro in the sand mm -hmm. and, or in the dirt. And I was with one of my buddies. And so there was a big lightning storm that rolled in over the, the Siski mountains. And my buddy and I were like, let's go chase this storm and see if we can get some lightning on the GoPro. And like, I ended up getting this lightning strike that like struck a hundred feet from my GoPro. Oh my and like, I remember like, it just like shook like everything in our body shook the whole ground. Wow. And I, I somehow got the picture and I sent it in the GoPro and they gave me like 250 bucks for it. And I thought I'd like won the lottery yeah. and that happened like one more, one more time later that summer too. But I remember telling my mom, I was like, mom, I just got a $250 like card from GoPro. And she was like, what? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm going to take both these cards I just got and buy the, the hero four or whatever the, I use the hero four black, the, the best one at the time. Yeah. So I sold mine. And so that's what kind of like started, like, I don't know, my photography, I guess, was just like, yeah. just, yeah. just finding like this passion that, you know, just kind of, I really believe God just revealed to me in the season that I needed, where I needed, so cool. I needed passion of some sort. I just felt like kind of, kind of down and out. And yeah. I mean, there's no other way to explain it. In my opinion, I just feel like, I mean, I feel like it, I, I definitely didn't find it on my yeah. own. No, that's so cool, man. Not to like over spiritualize, but just the the story of like it's starting the lightning strike i mean it's so like yeah it's crazy it's like martin luther his story i don't know if people know like church history but martin luther basically started the reformation and a lot of that started by he got stuck in a storm and a lightning strike basically scared the the crap out of him and like changed his life and then benjamin franklin well, it's just lightning strikes it's kind of funny but yeah that's um, great but yeah man that's that's really cool so and i feel like a lot of people um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, they want to get into the outdoor industry. They want to get into the hunting industry or whatever. And they kind of feel like, Oh, I can just like, you know, get a camera and start doing that. But like, there's a difference between, you know, not saying that people shouldn't try and get a camera and, but, um, there's a difference between like doing something that you love and that you're passionate about then like kind of try to force a, you know, square peg into a round hole, you know, like, you know, some people like it's not really a means to an end. The, I feel like the best photographers and videographers are people who just like love doing it and will do it just for fun and do it for themselves, like in their free time. And, and it just evolves. Have you felt, have you felt that same way? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, not even just in the hunting industry too, just like kind of mm -hmm. in any, like I've had sure. many, many friends say, Hey, I want to get a camera for X, Y, and Z. And I don't know. I, I, I'm always trying to help people. Like I have people text me almost daily asking like, 
you know, what lens should I get for this or that, or, or like mm-hmm. what camera would you recommend starting out? And I, I don't know. I just love like answering those questions to help people and yeah, um, just help them try and avoid some of the mistakes I made along the way. Yeah. Um, and on the other side of that too, I mean, like, you know, you found, you know, I think God orchestrated your situation, but like you said, like you found this passion and it all started just with a GoPro, you know? So yeah. it's not like you, a lot of people feel like, Oh, I have to have like, you know, a red camera or like the best Sony a seven S three or whatever, like to go out there and start. But if it's something you want to do, just start, you know? Definitely. Yeah. I, one of the biggest things I offer as advice for people who like want to like, say like just to narrow it down to hunting, like one of the biggest areas of advice I'll say about like photography or video is like, just shoot as much as you can and everything you can like, just mm-hmm. shoot. Like if someone asks you to shoot a wedding, shoot it. Yeah. Like if someone, you know, asks you to shoot engagement photos or family photos, shoot it. If someone yeah. asks you to, I don't know, put together some sort of small video, try and yeah. try and do it. Here's I, I, one. I, like if, if uh, this is one of the ways I kind of got my foot in starting almost every single church out there, like, well, basically beg you to do video for them you know like they're all looking for video people and most of the time they'll take volunteers and with no experience so um if you if you got a church that's that that's a great way to get your foot in the door and start learning some you know prosumer type video stuff is just go to your church people like hey i don't know anything or i know a little but if you you know i'd love to learn cameras if you guys need someone to volunteer totally agree i actually used to work part-time at a church in portland Mm -hmm. i mentioned that um really awesome church yeah but yeah i would say just try everything and do as much of everything as you can because you're always going to like learn like you're you'll be able to like learn something from you know a past photo shoot or a past video shoot that you could apply a a future one and i i do that like to this day it could be like some audio trick or it could be some video hack or you know or i remember like in this one situation I remember shooting like with these settings and how it worked, you know, in this situation, like, and you can just move that over. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think, I think the biggest thing though, is just really making sure like that you love photography. I think from, and like from, and that for me, I didn't make a single dollar with my camera for like the first two years I was taking pictures. Oh yeah. I think, that's one thing I really try and like impress on people is like, not, not to like brag about that at all, but just to say, I love photography for two years before I even like had to do an email about a job or had to do a photo yeah. and then invoice or, or whatever. Like I went out there like so like for so many days and nights and early mornings and, mm-hmm. you know, long, long back, like backpacking trips just for fun. And I just think that like, that's one of the biggest things I think people will forget is just like, Oh, I want to get a camera so I can start doing fun stuff and right. make money. And like, <laughs> yeah, you, you can. And I've seen, I've seen guys buy cameras and like within six months they're making like good money. And it's yeah. like, it's awesome. Like everyone's paths is different. Um, but I just feel like that's, what's helped me um, just stay more grounded creatively. And also to not get burnt out is just to have the the foundation that I was very fortunate to have of, you know, just doing it for a long time, just totally for fun and just friends and messing around. Totally, man. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's kind of like with my story too. I think my story is longer, I guess, but more meandering maybe. Um, But I remember even from just being a little kid making radio shows on a little tape recorder and like making, you know, little shows with my dad's, you know, VHS camcorder. And then, and then I started doing some stuff with some hunting guys and, you know, just for free and then the church and that led to CBN and then I got to travel all over the world, but it still took a while for me to, um, to really kind of step out on it on my own and combine my other passion, which I had my entire life, kind of like you, like, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been same thing. I've been shooting animals, the red rider BB gun since I could barely walk. And it's just <laughs> always what I loved, man. And, um, and so combining kind of this skill and this sort of love I have for um, video and photo with hunting um, has been really awesome. Um, and there are opportunities I've found, you know, I, like I've said before to a lot of people, there's a lot of guys who are much better hunters than me 
and there's a lot of guys who are much better videographers than me, and there's a bunch of guys that are in way better shape than I am. But there's not a whole lot of guys who can do all three pretty good, you know, stay keep up with guys in the mountains, shoot pretty good, and are decent hunters. And that, sh- that list is kind of short, to be honest. So, um, so that was really cool when all that clicked for me. When did you put that together, like your passion for photo and video and then your, your love of hunting? When did that kind of click? Oh, man um so yeah so like kind of like what i said earlier i grew up hunting with my dad but never like um i guess never married the two um with photography and hunting Mm -hmm. um until actually after college um it was 2018 and i was actually in grad school to be a history teacher Mm. and i already had my degree and i just really had felt that whole last year of grad school that i should drop out and pursue photography and it was kind of a scary thing for the first few months and i remember talking to my parents about it and they're like no like we really like you to finish like it'd be a really good thing for you to finish and i was like yeah like i i really think that too and so i remember that first year of grad school i it sounds crazy now but i sold my camera Mm. because i really wanted to like devote myself fully to my school because i was just i had one more year of baseball and one more year of school left um, actually a year and a half of school left. And I just told myself that like, if I'm really going to do this, I don't want to have the distraction of like, Oh, you know, cause I had like a few small job offers, but nothing crazy with photography. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, I really feel like I need to finish what I started and like honor my parents because they're the ones who, you know, help get me this far through college and yeah. all the, all this and that. And this is what they were the one to do. And so I just, I remember selling my cameras and I was kind of scared. Mm. Um, at the time I had a Nikon D750. That was my fir- first full frame camera. Um, and like a Sony A6300. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, that was like really tough. And I think that season was also a huge blessing because it really, um, it allowed me to finish that year of baseball, um, and that first year of grad school. Um, but then at the end of that first year, I just really, I really felt God was still putting on my heart that I needed to go freelance or whatever that looked like. I, I had no idea. Um, yeah. I just really felt like that summer I just needed to move up to Portland, Oregon and just try and figure it out because that passion in my heart for photography was just hotter than ever. <laughs> and I yeah. just, I just remember like mom, dad, like I've just got to try it. I've just yeah. got to try it. And I have no idea what it looks like. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I don't even know what my favorite thing to shoot is. And I, I mean, even to this day, I don't really have, know what my favorite thing to shoot yeah. is. That's not a big deal either to me personally. I, I don't know. Isn't that I, cool I like, though? I like how, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Isn't that cool though? How like, um, I, I've went through a season just from the faith tradition I grew up in where it was almost like, and it was just a lie from the enemy, but, um, where I had kind of convinced myself if it's something that I love to do, it can't be from God. Like God's only going to be happy if I like sell all my stuff and go be a missionary in like Mozambique or something. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. maybe that is for some people, but at the same time, like what I've found in the last couple of years is like God, he came to bring us life and life to the full. Like he wants you to do what you're passionate about. He put those passions in your heart for a reason. Absolutely. Yeah. And I not saying I didn't have a passion for like for teaching um, and for like my schooling, but I just really felt that like, you know, this is something I could do later if biography yeah. doesn't work out or if I don't love doing sure. it, full time. you know, or, you know, various other variables, you know, I just was like, I can always come back and do this, yeah. not in a bad way, but I just really feel like I need to just try this now. And if I crash and burn, I can always go back to school. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember talking to my parents about it at the, at the end of my second semester and they're like, yeah, like we totally support you. Like, whatever we can do to, you know, help get you connected with a place to live up in Portland, like we'll do it. And so I ended up living, actually living with my aunt and uncle, um, basically up in Portland for a couple months and then moved in with a couple of buddies from college up there and started working part-time at Athey Creek church, doing photo and video stuff there, learned a ton. Nice. Um, They're just shooting different kinds of media. Um, and then got connected with, um, a couple small bands in Portland. And then I ended up, um, this is kind of a, a, a backtrack in the story, but I, my senior year of college, I shot for Switchfoot 
Done. Oh, nice, bro. dude. Nice. And I've seen them live yeah. a couple of times. They're great. Oh, I, I love Switchfoot. One of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually snuck my camera into one of their concerts. <laughs> um, when they were down playing in Oregon. And I took a couple of photos of John Foreman, like crowd surfing. And somehow like Drew Shirley and a couple of the band guys like saw it and liked it. And I don't know, one thing led to another and their manager emailed me. Oh, I was wow. like, Hey, you want to come do photos at bro? And I was like, <laughs> I basically my jaw hit the floor and uh, I call my mom like crying. Cause I was just so happy. Cause this is like one of like the biggest yeah. bands in my life. And their music was like super instrumental and like getting me through like that really hard season I talked about of like, mm my knee surgery and through photography and, and onward. Um, so it was just like, I just feel like this really cool, like full circle moment that like yeah. God orchestrated in my life um, to have the, op- like to have the opportunity to go and yeah. take photos for one of my favorite Those are band. the moments when you're like, you know, God is like working. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so and cool. So, yeah. And then, so yeah, so I started doing some just like basically that first six months of freelance in Portland, I was just doing anything and everything. Like I took yeah. photos of a funeral. I did like five or six <laughs> weddings that summer. Worked part time at a church, like I said. Um, did some music stuff, like basically everything. Yeah. Um, and then, kind of what started the hunting avenue of my photography tr- uh, journey. Uh, one of my buddies from college, his name's Leon Luna, um, really good buddy of mine. He just randomly DM me one day, and he's like, "Hey, dude, uh, Mountain Ops is hiring a graphic designer." Mm. And I was like, I don't know who mountain ops is just cause I, I wasn't at all in the hunting industry. I wasn't, yeah. I literally wore Walmart camo and just went hunting like one yeah. weekend here with my dad. Like I just, <laughs> I knew what Cabela's was and that was kind of it. <laughs> like, um, I mean, I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, he's like, Oh dude, there's this, they're an amazing company. Super rad. Like you should totally reach out. And I was like, Leon, I don't even do graphic design, dude. Like, I really appreciate you like thinking of me, but I just, I don't even know how to use like any of those programs. Like I just do photography and video and he's like, we should still reach out. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Cause I, when he said that it was just kind of like, I felt like it was almost like God almost talking through him of just saying like, it never hurts to ask. Cause that was something that I've learned through looking back on my career at the time of like two years of just, just asking various companies or, or bands or, or whoever, like, Hey, can I take photos and video for you? Like, do you, yeah. do you have needs? Like, is there any opportunities you guys may have? I'd be super interested and would love to work with you guys. Um, so that's basically what I said at Mountain Ops. Cause I, I looked back at my journey and said, Hey, this is, this has happened. A, decent amount of times in crazy ways that blew my blew my socks off Mm -hmm. so why why not this one and so that's just kind of how i looked at it and yeah mountain ops got back to me about a month later and i was just like again jaw hit the floor and i was like yeah i would love to do some stuff with you guys and they're like have you ever filmed a hunt before and i was like nope never (laughs) never have ever filmed a hunt but i've like grown up hunting um a decent amount and so they took a chance on a guy like me who's never filmed a hunt. And I ended up filming my first hunt with Jordan Harbertson, Chad Mendez, um, and Rihanna Perry. <laughs> That's and a good it, one to start with. It was a kick in the <laughs> pants. It was seriously one of the best two weeks of my life. And I, what was the hunt? Uh, I was an archery elk hunt in Eastern Oregon. Okay. Um, at Opal Butte ranch. And it was just, I don't know. It just was one of the best experiences of my entire life. And I just, right, really, so we got, we got to dig into this a little bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So did they hire, did they, did Mountain Lops hire you or they contracted you to film this hunt? So yeah, they just contracted me to film this hunt. Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, it was originally supposed to be just a week, but then it turned into two weeks because Chad did it, ended up coming out to um, Elk Hunt as well. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it was just kind of like, honestly, it was just like zero to a hundred. Just yeah, so- all of a sudden I go from just, you know, I've never even been on an archery hunt before. Yeah. All of a sudden I'm filming one. So with, how did you know, like what, yeah, that's crazy, dude. Like how, how did you prepare for that? how did you know what to bring? Did you like research? what did you do? How did you do that? Um, honestly, <laughs> I didn't really know what to expect at all. Yeah. Um, I remember like at the time I was like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy looking back. I had the hunt was on, I think it was on August 30th was the first day of the hunt. 
Uh-huh. And I'd be in Portland to meet up with Jordan Harbertson at the airport. The day before that, I had just flown back from Italy because I was over there for two weeks, just having a total just vacation with some friends from college. It was kind of just celebrating <laughs> being going to college. I remember going from like eating pizza and spaghetti for two weeks in Italy to flying back. And then the next day I was meeting up in Portland. That's and gnarly. I was, like, I was just like, oh man, here we go. So I guess to prepare, I ate a lot of pizza and carb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. But uh, yeah, so um, I, I had stayed in like decent shape too. Like, I mean, I was only like three months post-college baseball. So I feel like I was still in like pretty decent, like hiking shape um, for not like doing a ton of hunting specific hiking uh-huh. stuff. Um, uh, but that being said, yeah, I just, it went zero to a hundred real quick. Um, met up with Jordan and the guys from Opal Butte. We drove out there and immediately it was just like, we all just hit it off. Like the nice. first night we we're all like up late laughing, having a great time. And I was just like, dude, this is fun. Like, this is like yeah. really fun. Um, and then, you know, fast forward the week, a week goes by with hunting with Jordan and Rihanna and they were just awesome, awesome people. All the people at Opal Butte were awesome, awesome people. Um, I really hope that I can go back there. Maybe, maybe this year. Um, I really would love to see those guys again. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just, it was just crazy, dude. It's just, I mean, have you ever been on our trail kind of experience? Yeah. So I, <laughs> I did, I mean, I've hunted, I've, film some hunts but yeah it wasn't nothing like that and so i went this year with dan staten to new mexico for nine days so i knew a little bit what i I mean i knew more than you probably did what i was getting myself into but still it was huge learning curve and um i learned a ton on that trip yeah massive learning curve i'm like i remember the first time i heard two elks bugling back and forth each other because like i'd always hunted in november so i never really heard them bugle and I, I just, my mind was blown. Like I, we were just in this like draw. I remember it was me, Rihanna Carey and uh, Sierra Langbell. And I was just following them around. And we were, we literally, it was just an afternoon hunt. The morning was kind of slow. So they're like, Hey, we're going to drive out this Ridge and just go kind of in like the open country and just see what we can see kind of like, cause they had mule deer tags too. Mm-hmm. Eve. And so we're like, let's just go look for mule deer too. And so we were just out there just like messing around, driving around the side by side. And all of a sudden these bulls started bugling like, in the draw below us and i was just like dude this is insane they it's such a like- primal sound yeah. that that hunt with dan was the first time i'd heard elks you know in real life elk bugling up close and and then seeing you know a huge bull like in bow range it's it's like prehistoric or something yeah i'll have to send you i got this one clip of sierra and i down in this draw and there's just these two bu- big bulls just bugling back and forth that's awesome it's like just this really cool clip right because we're just like we're just like little kids <laughs> like oh my gosh this is crazy but but yeah, yeah so I, see that. I, I ended up staying there for two weeks um because chad came out um and hunted as well so i filmed with him and rihanna and just kind of went back and forth every day um but yeah just that whole two-week experience like it was just so fun and not only was it fun i just really felt like this is like what I'm supposed to do right now. Hmm. Like, it's, like it was just this weird feeling. Like, I just felt like this is, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And I remember it was kind of like one of those like smoky days, you know, like in that late, late summer, like September time in Oregon has mm-hmm. a lot of wildfires. So there was like a, a one day where a bunch of smoke rolled in. And it was actually the day we heard all those bugles um, down on the draw, but we were on this like big open flat and the sun was like starting to kind of set. And I remember like we were just watching the sunset through the smoke because you can kind of like, you, you can kind of look at the sun without hurting your eyes when it's in that yeah. really smoke. And all of a sudden, like, as it's like setting, there was like this bite that got taken out of the sun. And it was like this like weird crescent shaped like sun. And we're like, mm. dude, like, what is that? And it, it just like clicked in my head. I was like, oh my gosh, that's Mount Hood in front of the sun oh, as it's wow. setting because we were, I just, it just happened to be, we were like about, I don't know, I think it was like 90 ish miles from Mount hood. Yeah. Like just how it, how it lined up that day with like the sun setting in that one specific spot Yeah, where we, in the one specific spot where we were, we could just see this perfect image of like Mount hood silhouetted against the sun. So and I remember cool. like taking that picture and like showing Jordan and I don't know, just something I'll never forget. I just remembered like, I was just, 
I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Like, I just, that's like what I feel like God communicated to me through yeah. that, through that moment in time. Um, so yeah. And then, you know, fast forward a few months, few months that fall, I filmed another hunt with mountain ops, um, and the guys from dude perfect in Montana, mm. another archery elk hunt, which was also a kick in the pants, like so much fun. Um, got to meet the other two owners, Casey and Trevor of mountain ops mm-hmm. on that one and say like same exact feeling like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Like, that's just what I kept feeling in my heart. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, while I was doing that, I was also, you know, working at the church back in Portland and just doing the you know, other side photography stuff. And then lo and behold, mountain ops offered me a job to nice. come move out to Utah, work full time for them. And I just knew right away. I was like, yes, I've got to do it. I just, I've got to go. Mm-hmm. And I remember telling my parents that, and they were at first a little nervous. They're like, Utah, like that's so far away. It's really not. But yeah. at the time I was like, you know, 23 and they're like, that's really far away. And yeah. I was like, I know, but I'm supposed to go. I, this, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. And I just, I know it's what I'm supposed to do. And so January, 2019, I moved out there and I ended up working for mountain ops for a year and a half full time. And it was one of the best things I've ever done in my whole life and awesome, awesome people, awesome company. And just, was very fortunate to have a lot of awesome experiences there. Yeah. So yeah, nothing but good things to say. That's really cool, man. Um, so it's, I mean, it sounds like almost from the beginning, like God had your hand, his hand on you doing this work because like crazy stuff just starts happening. And like, I remember there had been points in time in my life where the same thing is like these just amazing things just keep rolling. And it's just like, you just know, that like God is doing this, he's orchestrating things are rolling. You're like you said, you're doing what you're supposed to do. And it's an amazing feeling. Um, it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it's really cool. Um, so I'm guessing, you know, but did you ever have those, um, those moments you may not have, but did you ever have those moments where, cause you know, starting off on a career in art, which is what photography and videography is, can be scary because I mean, for a long time, I'd sort of talked myself out of my dreams because I was like, ah, it's, you know, it's too good to be true or you can't make a living doing that or whatever. Um, did you ever have those struggles? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes still do like, you yeah. know, have like that little, <laughs> the emperor's new group. I just watched it and I have my wife, but have like the devil on your shoulder, you know, telling you, you can't do something. Yeah. Or, you know, just putting like, like seeds of doubt in your mind. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and you just have to tune that out but also like that's just part of it like you're yeah i feel like that's always going to be how it's going to be with yeah. especially with art um in like the field of work that we have is is very like um i'd say it's it's not as black and white there's more gray um mm-hmm. and i feel like we're more subject to emotions like in terms of like oh you can't make it or you're not good enough or you know, like kind of what you're saying, like, I might not be the best photographer, the best hunter, the best in shape guy, but like, I'm going to try my best to be, you know, the jack of all trades of mm-hmm. as much as I can and, and, and do what I can with what I'm given and be the best I can with what I've been given. Um, for sure. so I think that's, that's really important. Like, I don't know for, for me and like my, my journey, like that's something I've, I've had to, you know, definitely walk through multiple times. Like, yeah. Should I, I remember like there's, there's been times I've been browsing Craigslist for, you know, like late, like manual labor jobs, just to, like help make ends meet. Like when I was very first starting out, like, yeah, I, I think it's just part of, part of the journey. Um, sure. and just always just like, never forget those moments. Um, but you know, just, just keep working as hard as you can yeah. with what you've been given. Cause doing what you love, and this doesn't have to be just for people doing photography or videography or art or anything. I mean, a lot of times doing what you love comes with some struggle and even some people in your life might be saying, Oh, you know, you just need to get a normal job or you need to do whatever. Um, you know, or maybe it's starting a business an entrepreneurial journey. Like, um, struggle is just part of it. And, you know, I firmly believe nothing really worthwhile in life is easy. I mean, like I said, there are times when things are just clicking and grooving cause God's kind of got you. But, um, you almost need that struggle to, to get through that. And just to kind of, I don't know, it's almost like paying your dues or something. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, think of like every good movie you've ever seen, 
Like mm-hmm. there's always struggle yeah. and that struggle like is so important to like that character's formation of like yeah. who he's supposed to be like, or no, who the writer wants him to be. Yeah. Like, Cause I mean, struggle is interesting and builds character. And so it's, it's just like a hard hunt. I mean, if you just, you know, walk out and just, it's easy. Um, it's not fun. Like it's, you know, going back to like type two fun or whatever, like, um, the stuff that you really remember is like when you got stuck in that rainstorm and you were freezing cold and you had to like hike for like, you know, five hours with wet boots and then, but you stuck it out and you killed that bull or whatever. And like, if you're just like, Oh, I walked out on this Ridge and I saw the bull and I walked up and shot it. It's nowhere near as cool. Yeah. And I think that's really important too, as like a photographer, videographer to like show that, um, because mm-hmm. a lot of people, I mean, just with the nature of hunting, like a lot of people don't know or they're not around it and you know, they're not exposed to hunting on a daily basis. Like their, mm-hmm. their lives are pretty removed from the act of hunting and, and killing an animal. Um, and the fact that the hunt is, there's so much more to a hunt. Like I'm, you know, I'm preaching the choir on this, but there's just so much more to the adventure and the story of the hunt mm-hmm. than the final part. But I think that final part is also just as important too. And I think that's something as photographers that, we shouldn't shy away from capturing because there's just something magical about, you know, an animal, you you harvesting an animal and then bringing it back. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. humans are doing it for thousands of years. And so it's just a really cool way, I think, um, to have a camera and be able to document that. I think that's a really cool thing. Yeah. I was just talking to Adam Foss the other day. I did a podcast with him and, um, you know, I was making the point that some people are like, Oh, you know, all these Instagram or YouTube hunters, like they're ruining it. Uh, you should, you should just go out there and hunt. You don't got to film everything. But if you think about it, like storytelling and art and hunting have been hand in hand since the beginning of human history. Like yep. look back at cave paintings. What were they painting? They were painting dudes with spears and buffaloes yeah. and stuff. Little stick guys. Yeah. 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 So it's like, these things have been like, men going out harvesting food and coming back with stories is as old as humankind. Yeah, no, so. absolutely. Yeah. And you're I just, we're totally connecting agree. with that. Yep. Totally agree. Yeah. That's cool, man. Um, all right. So, and again, like, you know, especially lately, I feel like I've been doing a lot of podcasts with like other like video and photo guys. Cause it's just something I'm interested in right now. But, um, you know, like I said, folks, like if you're listening and you have no interest in video or photo at all, it's, I feel like this is still, um, apropos because it can be applied to any like entrepreneurial journey, or maybe you have a product you're developing or, you know, a really tough project at work you're working on or a family crisis or whatever. Um, you know, struggle is part of it. And, um, and finding your passion is really important and what God created you to do, not what you kind of, I don't want to say what you want to do because a lot of times what God created you to do should be what you want to do, but, um, find your passion and go for it and be willing to struggle for it. But anyway, um, moving on a little bit. Um, Oh, I did want to ask you one more thing about that first gig. Like, were you so kind of like naive and just fresh off the, Italy vibes that you weren't really stressing it or did you feel a lot of pressure because I mean like you know capturing a hunt like you just said it I mean capturing the kill whether people want to say it or not the kill shot is like it's it's the kill shot it's like you have to you don't have to have it but it's very important and it only happens once and you cannot recreate it Um, did you feel that pressure or you kind of just so blinded you just kind of went with it and you were good yeah no I definitely like had a lot of pressure. Like, <laughs> I, I think it was very healthy pressure though. I, yeah. and I feel like that's just kind of like how I approach any sort of like shoot or a hunt. Like, I just want to like capture it the very, very best I can. Mm-hmm. If that means like, you know, like I, basically like whatever I've got to do to like not be a burden or to make sure that, you know, I've got enough batteries or, or whatever. Like, I don't know. I just, it was, yeah. I, I guess it was just so much of just like figuring all that stuff out, like just right away yeah. Uh, and just trying to be like, okay, like, is this a good time to ask for this shot? Or I just, you know, not ask for a couple hours and just document whatever happens. Um, you know, and just, and always be monitoring, like, how's my microphone battery level doing? Cause at the time I had like a microphone that had double a battery. Yeah. So I had like, a pouch of double a batteries in my backpack and 
quickly learned. I'm like, that's the worst thing to do. Like, I just need to get like a rechargeable microphone, you know, and with USB C power, and then have that also power my camera. So I don't know. I feel like I'm still always learning something while out on the hunt. And like, sure. my wife, my wife kind of makes fun of me because she's like, you're ordering like this piece of gear. I thought you had like all the gear you need. I'm like, yeah, but I want to test this out for this certain situation. That's yeah. going to take like three minutes to explain, but it's like really important if it, if it's like a, you know, an aha moment, like it's going to revolutionize this aspect of like my work. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool, I'm, I'm a big, like um, gearhead, gear junkie guy. Yeah. I, I, um, I just think it's really fun. Speaking of that, like I'd kind of like to hear um, gear specific, but could be lessons also, but like, were there some things you found on that first trip or even just your first couple of trips that were like standouts of like, Oh, this is in my pack every time other than the obvious thing, like your camera and lens. Um, or like, this is something that like on my first couple of trips, I always carried around and never pulled it out once, you know, and it doesn't even have to be photography specific. It could be just gear related, um, or any other like big lessons that jumped out from your early days that you kind of would do differently going back. Yeah. I'd say <clears throat> like lens wise, like I just happened to rent a 24 to 105 for that hunt. And I was just like, eh, I've never really used it. I don't think I'll like it. You know, cause like I really wanted to get a 24 to 70 at the time. Mm hmm I was like, I just, I can only afford the 24 to 105. So I rented that and I was like, dude, this lens is awesome. Like, yeah. even though it's like a quote unquote kit lens and yeah. only four aperture to get like super nerdy, but yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And I, it's still like my go-to today. Like, yeah, yeah I, I have a 24 like, to 240. That's like that too. It's like not a super nice lens. I got it used. Um, you know, you got to refocus through the, you know, the focal length or whatever, but, um, it's so versatile. Yeah. Yeah. And just learning like what is versatile and like what is like desired and trying to find that line of like, okay, how can I get as close with having the most versatile piece of gear, but also like the most like creatively, aesthetically pleasing piece of gear, because I don't know, yeah. F4 does have its limitations. Um, but yeah, I'd say like the two things like right off the bat on that first time I learned with, in terms of like my gear were how important a 24 to 105 was and how important having like a fast prime, like a 35 or a 24 or an 85 is for like any sort of like low light filming or just, you know, that low light photo or that subject sep separation photo that you want to mm -hmm. take. Um, but then, you know, there's also like, I think it's kind of cool to challenge myself to take a photo that like has a lot of depth of, you know, like shooting at F11, like what would mm -hmm. be a good photo and like, Cause that's really hard to do. Um, cause it's easy to like, just put it at F1.8 and just take a cool picture, but like trying to like push myself, like, okay, I'm going to shoot at F11. How can I make a really cool composition? That's going to look really great. Um, so I don't know, just trying to make, make it like almost like a little game, um, mm. creatively while yeah. you're out there. That's cool, man. Um, anything that you like packed on those first couple trips that you're ditching? Uh, Ronan. Okay. <laughs> I, I I have packed a Ronin. I packed it on that first trip, which is a, uh, which uh, is just a electronic gimbal stabilizer. for people. Who, yeah. yeah. Stabilizer. Yeah. So I, I packed down the first time and quickly realized that one, it takes several minutes to set up. Mm -hmm. you need, even you need level ground to set it up properly, uh, which is hard when you're on the mountain. Um, and two, it's, it's a couple pounds. It's like three or four pounds which I mean, adds up mm -hmm. and, and two, like, or, you know, three, it just takes time to set up. And oftentimes when you're running gun archery hunting or running gun rifle hunting, like you just don't have that time mm -hmm. as a camera guy, because you do not want to be the reason that like, you don't get to, you know, the, the ridge you need to get to, to, you know, get the elk or the deer. Um, you basically, it's just like, if I can be as like almost unnoticeable as I can, mm -hmm with capturing the hunter in his helmet, like the better. Yeah. And I just feel like the less things that I can have to, to, to detract from that or detract from his experience, the better mm -hmm. uh, I've found like basically just to be like as big of like a help, but also like, you know, just, Hey, like, I don't want to take away from like his timing of how he wants to do things. And every, every hunter is different. Some hunters are like, let's go like right now, right now. Someone like, Oh, let's just like sit here and kind of wait a while and just, 
you know, yeah. just kind of finding that, like finding that balance of like how to read the situation as the photographer of like, okay, how much time do I have right here to, you know, do I have time to eat lunch really quick? Do I have time to just grab a power bar really quick? Or do I just have no time at all? And I just yeah. got to figure it out, but thank you. <laughs> coffee. Nice. That's a good wife right there. Um, his wife just brought him coffee. If you're just listening. Um, yeah. So just real quick, hit me with like a couple of your other uh, most memorable trips, just like a list of like here with this guy here with that guy real quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of my most memorable trips, obviously that first one in Oregon yeah. with ops, um, but then the, the hunt I did with them right after that in Montana with dude. Perfect. Um, but yeah, I'd say in 2019, 2020, I got to go to New Zealand with Brian Colin and Ryan Lampers nice. and just have an awesome, awesome time over there um, in the Southern Alps filming for Grady's YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, amazing experience. Some of the craziest, I mean, actually I'm going to take that back. The craziest like <laughs> landscape I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. And as a guy who loves Lord of the Rings and that's like my favorite movie of all time, mm -hmm. it's just a dream come true to walk through like the tussock grass fields and just <laughs> like glacial mountains, you know, four and 5,000 feet above you just straight up. And you're just like, dude, there's no people out here. There's no predators. That, that's what like blew my mind. Cause we, we were staying in these like little huts, like way up in the mountains. And there's just like no fear of like a bear coming to like yeah. break down the door. Like it was just like, it was just a weird complex. Hmm. Like at, or, you know, there's no cougars. There's no yeah. nothing. Like we had a, like a little possum come and scratch at the door a couple of times. Like, <laughs> but, like that was it. <laughs> like, nice. I, it, it was just, it was just a place I'll never forget. And I really hope I get to go back there yeah. soon. Cause it was, I don't know. It definitely like opened my eyes to like how, like how cool hunting can be and like the places that hunting can take you mm. just like, it's so much more than just, you know, maybe just like the West, like there's so many opportunities out there. Um, and at the bottom line, like hunting just means like adventure, like to me, like that's like one of my favorite parts about hunting is just the adventure of it and capturing Absolutely. that adventure. Um, and I think that's one thing that, I don't know, just, it's just will always be my favorite part about it because you just never know where you're going to end up with hunting. Yeah. So on that, like, have you, does your adventure itch get scratched enough by kind of being the camera guy? Do you ever like, like, is it hard for you to strike the balance of like hunter versus cameraman? Cause like for me, um, I love shooting but at the same time, like I'm planning my upcoming, upcoming season. Like there's no way I'm just going to shoot all season. Like I have to get a gun in my hand sometimes. Um, that's just me. Um, have you, have you had trouble striking that balance or are you perfectly happy just to go out and shoot video? Yeah, I would say my adventure, it's pretty much gets scratched just being out there on the hunt, nice. like and capturing it as a photographer. Um, and maybe that's I know you went I, to uh, Alaska with a go hunt guys, right on that caribou hunt and you harvested yes. one, correct? Yes. Yeah. I was very fortunate and that's was cool. able to go there this year with them and ended up getting to shoot a caribou, which a nice I, one too. Yeah. It never would have happened in my wildest dream. Seriously. I just, I don't know. I just, when the opportunity kind of presented itself and Chris from go hunt asked me if, if I wanted to go and I was like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just started talking about the hunt and the nature of it. And I was like, you know, if we're going to be there for like 10 days, like, and there's going to be a lot of them potentially, like, would it would be cool of me if I picked up a tag as well. And he's just like, heck yeah. And I'm like, nice, dude, dude. Okay. Nice. I'm like, uh, I promise like, you know, I'll be the last one to shoot. Like if, even if it doesn't happen, like, mm -hmm. you know, I would just love maybe the sliver of a chance of an opportunity and the go hunt guys are just awesome dudes. And so like, heck yeah, yeah let's yeah. make that happen. So yeah, it's gonna yeah, be. They are awesome. I think it's gonna be coming out in the next few months. Okay, um, cool. Hunt. So yeah, be looking for on their YouTube channel. Yeah, I love those guys. And so, but it's it's not like um, it's not very common. Like a lot of times when guys want to hire a camera guy, they want a camera guy, and that's it. And a lot of times it's you know it's hard because there's places where it's hard. you can't you know there's, you can't necessarily get tags together and stuff like that. It's not over the counter. Um, but I've worked with some people before in the past where I'm like. Hey man, yeah, I'd love, I, you know, I love working with you. I want to work with you again. Um, but I want to hunt too. Um, is there any opportunity for that? And they're kind of like, mm, no. 
Um, and then I'm working with some other people now, like where, uh, you know, they're cool with me having a tag and, and kind of being a hunter and a filmer, which is really my ideal situation. But, um, back to the question, like, so, but for you, you kind of enjoy the experience even just with a, a camera in your hand, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And like last year I spent 86 days, I think filming hunts last wow. year. That's hardcore. And then I was very fortunate to have 21 days personal um, where it was just me, no camera. Sometimes I packed a camera, um, yeah. but most of the time I didn't. And just, I got to hunt both archery elk and, uh, spring bear in Oregon last year. Nice. Um, it's so nice to have those trips sometimes where you can just, like I did an yeah. antelope hunt with my cousin and uncle and dad. And like, I was going to film it. I even like rented some good gear and stuff after like the first two days. I was like, dude, I just want to enjoy this hunt with my family and have fun. Yeah. Like I just got back from hunting with Dan and, um, and those memories are just amazing to hunt with family. I mean, I did capture some stuff, but you know, nothing I'm really going to do anything with. Yeah. Yeah. I would say in 2019, 2020, you know, I went pretty much just all out film and hunts, like mm -hmm. spent zero time doing personal hunts aside from a weekend. I spent with my dad on his hunt in Oregon and mm -hmm. I, I didn't have a tag. I was just hanging out with my dad. Cool. Um, and then <clears throat> kind of at the start of 2021 though, I, I was like, you know, I've been spending a lot, I've basically spent like the bulk of my last three years filming hunts. And I just, at the time really felt like, you know, if I'm going to keep doing this, if, since this is where I still feel like I'm called to be, I think I really need to make more time to hunt for myself, mm -hmm. not like selfishly, but just like, so that I have those experiences as a hunter to, to draw on as I'm out there taking photos. Like, you know, yeah. what was I feeling at this moment? in the hunt or at this moment, you know, in the pack out or whatever. And just so that I can have a little bit more like personal, emotional experience to draw on, um, as I'm capturing those on later hunts where I'm just the photographer. Right. Um, so last year I was like, okay, I'm going to put in for spring bear in Oregon. And then I drew a tag and I was like, cool. And so I set aside like six days to go. And, you know, I saw four bears and I never had an opportunity, but it was a total blast. Like I yeah. got to hang out with somebody from high school and college who I hadn't seen in years. And, you know, I was like, dude, this is like, that was, that was a huge blessing. And then yeah. same thing, same thing for archery and elk, um, in Oregon last year too. I just, you know, got to have a lot of really awesome experiences and adventures with good buddies from high school. And I don't know, it just, it's something that like, okay, I'm going to do that again this year. And, yeah. um, and just try and find that balance of like, okay, you know, how much is a good time to, you know, how much time can I set aside to hunt personally? Um, as well as like, how much work can I keep up with, with the hunting industry stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and just, you know, see how, how, how I, basically just, just to find the happy medium of hunting for myself and for whatever it takes to fill my cup as a hunter. Yeah. But also like how, like basically like, because it, what also fills my cup is out there photographing hunts. Mm. Um, and it's kind of like this weird thing to explain because a lot of hunters have asked me like, is it, oh, does it bother you that you don't pull the trigger? I'm like, no, not at all. Like I just love being out here. And I mean, in a way I'm shooting the camera too with my camera with a long lens, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it is a form of hunting in its own right. I mean, yeah. you're, you're capturing something you're, um, so. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I feel just as fulfilled either way. If That's cool. I, I really, I, at this point in my life, I really can't say which one I would prefer more. Um, the big, the biggest thing is just the people you're out with too. Like, like whether it's, you know, filming or, or hunting, like as long as I'm out there with, awesome awesome folks that mm -hmm. i'm building a relationship with and having a great time like i could care less if i have the gun in my hand like that's that's just yeah. where i'm at. that's awesome man uh let me see if there's anything that this has been a great conversation man um has there been any times where you've been out there and um maybe it's a tough hunt and you've had to kind of lean on your faith to kind of get you over that next ridge mentally or spiritually Definitely. Yeah. New Zealand, especially. I, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've seen the gritty. Oh yeah. Film. I've seen it. But yeah. So I, I didn't know that was you though, but that's cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so I tripped and fell in that glacial river on like the third day Ooh. and I sprained my knee and it was the same knee I tore in college. Wow. And immediately I was just like, Oh no. Cause I just, I felt this like instability. I felt this like similar pain to like when I tore it. Ooh. And I immediately just had this flood of emotions, like hit me 
while I'm out there on this hunt, you know, like for work, you know, halfway around the world. And so all these emotions just started hitting me like, you know, Oh crap. Like I'm a failure. Like I can't believe I just happened. Like, you know, just getting like some serious, like spiritual attacks on my heart Mm. while I was out there. And I remember like, I, like, I, like, I don't know, it was just one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through, like in my like career, um, in terms of like just getting hurt out on the mountain and mm-hmm. there's not really anything like I can do or anyone else can do. Um, so I ended up just staying in the hut for two days while mm-hmm. Brian and Ryan went up and they ended up killing two chamois up on the mountain. Um, but I had to stay in the hut for two days and just totally just rest and elevate my knee because it was just swollen and wow. really, really like just, I, I, I had felt like I maybe had torn something like it felt really unstable and it was about everything I could do just to walk to the Creek and back for water. Um, so I ended up staying a rough two days, man, dude, it, it, I, I have never experienced anything like that in my life. And like, I alone in a tiny a cabin, 10, like yeah, injured, I, I 10, out of 10 recommend it. Like <laughs> I, I would say it was, it was super hard, but at the same time I was in this, you know, seven foot by seven foot cabin with two bunks. And I had no Wi-Fi, no cell service. I had a couple of sermons downloaded, a couple of songs downloaded on my phone, mm. listened to all of them several times over. And I just spent a lot of time sleeping, a lot of time praying, a lot of time just reflecting on my journey that, you know, for a photography from the guy who in college who blew out his knee, the same knee that I'm sitting here in this bunk bed, you know, complaining about. And then, you know, God provided a camera at a time in my life where I just had no direction and kind of an identity crisis to fast forward, you know, the three years up leading up to that point. And it just kind of helped me. I don't know. I, I think that moment in that cabin helped recenter me a little bit hmm. and be like, you know, what, I need to make, you know, getting in shape more of a priority. Not that I wasn't in good shape, but I just I was like, I could be in better shape because mm-hmm. I don't want this to happen again. Like I. So that, that was a big moment for me in regards to that um, and just being in what mountain shape, uh, yeah. what we call mountain shape, but, but also just like, you know, I don't want to ever be a hindrance on a hunt ever again. Like that was a big learning experience for me at 23 years old, you know, cause I'm out there with like full grown men who, you know, <laughs> have been doing this their whole life where, as I've been doing it for at the time, like seven months. <laughs> like, wow. So I was still pretty dang like fresh and new to hunting and like mm-hmm. the why behind it. Cause I remember having those thoughts. I'm like, you know, like, am I like truly where I'm supposed to be? Like, I just got hurt. Is that like, is God trying to tell me something? But you know, it's just, it was just all those little like negative, like doubts on my yeah. shoulder we were talking about. For sure. um, but yeah, I just, that was one of the, the hardest things I've ever gone through, but I'm so grateful that I had that experience because it, it's something I still think about when I'm in the gym, like, you know, how can I strengthen my knee up? And to this day, I've never had an issue since then, but I think it's only because I went through that yeah. and it, it, the importance of my knee health and just my overall physical health was just impressed on me. Like, Hey, I have a physical job. I've got to mm-hmm. make being in the gym and cardio and stuff a priority if I want to do the things I want to do. And if I want to do the, the filming of hunts that I feel like I'm supposed to be doing in my life right now. So, and it, and it helps too having a wife who's a personal trainer. So she helps crack the whip. Okay. You're lucky. Yeah. Um, you know, I got a wife just feeding you a bunch of ice cream and stuff. That's good. Um, <laughs> well, dude, so, um, yeah, that I've, I always bring a tiny little, it's like new Testament and Psalms and Proverbs with me and a little like journal thing. And, multiple times well a couple times on some some tough hunts especially this one in kodiak that we were just on that did the film about um you know we shot one the first day basically then it was like four days of like seeing nothing and this is like my second trip and i was starting to think like you know all this effort and time i put into making this film you know it's going to be a bust you know i'm going back from alaska again empty-handed eating tag soup like and i always seem to fall back on psalm 37 you know um delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart and just kind of letting go and just saying, all right, you know what? I'm just going to enjoy this experience. Enjoy this place. I'm at the blessing that is even just to be here. 
Um, and in the end it all, it all turned out and we doubled up on some bucks in the last morning. But, um, but yeah, multiple times my faith has just been huge. Cause you know, you can't go crying to your hunting buddy or the guy who hired you like, oh, I'm depressed. I'm, you know, I'm homesick. Oh, like yeah. you gotta have, you gotta have something, you know, to fall back on. And if you don't have anything, I don't know how guys do it. Like, you know, the Lord is, is my refuge and my strength and, you know, when stuff gets hard in these hunts, like it becomes very real sometimes. And having that, that your faith and that relationship with God to fall back on is just huge. Amen, dude. Yeah. I think filming hunts and just being out there too, like not only is it a job, but I really do feel like I come back from every hunt, like a better man. And like, yeah. that's like, what I tell my wife too, like, I really do feel like out there, like I always come back having learned something or learn that I could do something that maybe I didn't think I could do or totally or, or fill in the blank. Like I went on a <clears throat> hunt this year here in Idaho with Brady from go hunt. It was one of the nice. hardest physical hunts I've done. I mean, it was probably second only to New Zealand. It doesn't hurt that his strides are like 10 feet long each. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm six three, so I, oh, I have okay. long legs too, but, yeah. um, but yeah, he's, he's like Bigfoot. He definitely, yeah. I mean, <laughs> even when I'm around him, I'm like, dang Brady, you're, freaking tall but that that hunt i did with him this year like it was like i said second to new zealand in terms Mm. of the physicality and so and he told me that going and he's like were you guys in colorado or uh just just here in idaho okay um but yeah i just was like i remember like when he's like yeah it's gonna be brutal like be ready i was like okay and so like i i prepared myself this season like really well i i think i hiked like I think 250 miles or something in September nice. alone, like just filming hunts, but also like hunting. And so I just, I felt very prepared, like going into it. And it was just a really cool moment for me. Like having had that moment in New Zealand where I like faltered a little bit mm-hmm. and then, you know, to have worked so hard the last few years to have a, a moment of, you know, a, a basically a, a challenge of equal physical ability presented to my, in, in front of me mm-hmm. and to overcome that, um, and I'm, yeah, just the hunt was super fun. Like it was just me and Brady out there, totally solo. Nice. Um, and we got Brady shot a really, really cool buck and cool. It was a really cool experience. So yeah. and it was kind of like what you're saying, like with your Kodiak hunt, like where you guys didn't really see anything for four days. Like we, we didn't see a buck for six days. Mm. I think, I think the whole six days we saw like a couple of does, like we were, wow. we were just getting skunked. And we were in there like 11 miles deep or, or, or something like that. It was like 11 or 12 miles. And I'm like, dude, this is like crazy. And like, we were hearing wolves and yeah, it was just like, it was a lot of adversity and like, just going back to that, like, that's my favorite parts about like my job and, and hunting is just the adversity that yeah. refine, re- refines you as a man. Yeah, man. And, and how cool it is that we get to do this like for a job and, um, you know, and like you could look at it as a negative, but you also say like, you know, a lot of people are trying to squeeze in their gym time, like between the office and going home and stuff. It's like, you know, for us, it's almost like, yeah, I mean, making sure that your physical fitness is a priority is like part of the job. Cause the most important piece of gear you got is like your knees and your back. Yeah. So, um, so for me, yeah. <laughs> so for me, that means staying in shape physically, but also like we're going back, staying, um, and keeping my, uh, spiritual fitness up, man. Like, you know, I believe that it's something you got to maintain every day, just like physical fitness. You know, um, there are scriptures in the Bible about like, basically God doesn't necessarily hear like foxhole prayers. I'm not saying he doesn't or won't like help you out if you're in a bind, but if you have like a daily connection with God that you're working on every day, um, there's something to be said for that over the only time you prayed all year was in your like, you know, about, to, you know, you're in a foxhole, basically you're about to lose it. So yeah. um, I think it's something we got to stay up on. And, but anyway, man, it's been really cool talking to you. I really enjoyed connecting with you, man. Like I hope we get to do something together someday or something. Um, Absolutely. Hunter. Yeah, this has been awesome. Yeah, man. Anything else uh, you want to just say in closing or anything that I didn't hit on? Um, yeah, I would say kind of going along with what you were saying about, um, packing a Bible, like, you know, just like one of those little pocket Gideon Bibles mm-hmm. in the wilderness, um, and just, you know, on your hunts and stuff and just making sure your spiritual fitness is just as important as your physical fitness. Um, especially out there because you just never know what is going to come, you know, what kind of adversity is going to come on a hunt. Yeah. Um, I think that really goes in line with like 
you know, the story of Genesis where God created man, like in the wilderness, mm. like not in the garden of Eden, um, like Eve. And I just think that's like, that's like always what's spoke to me. Um, I think I read that in wild at heart, um, okay. John Eldridge. I, I, I want to say really good things about that book. My mom actually gave me that book in middle school, but I was like a middle school turd and didn't like read it, but I need to go back and read great it. Book. Yeah. Great book. Um, but yeah, I just, I think that, um, like looking back at like all the moments in my life, like where I've been like, you know, quote unquote in the wilderness, like, I feel like it's been a place where a lot of the stressors and and things of like my mundane, like life gets stripped away. And it's just like me and God out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just feel like it's like where the, like, the, it's like the original place where we're, where God communicated with us. Um, and you look in the totally. Bible and stories of Jesus, like going into the wilderness, um, to fast and to pray and to, to be with God Absolutely. Um, or going into, you know, it basically just, it's a, it's a great way to connect back with him. And that's just been the story of my life, um, all through like my, my journey with photography and mm-hmm. just being out there and just whether I had, we, in, whether I had a camera in my hand or not, just getting out into a place where I felt like I could get away from the things that like distracted me or were stressing me out or bugging me or bogging me down and just have some one-on-one time with my creator um, and just kind of totally. refresh myself. And whether that ended up with, you know, a successful hunt and the harvesting an animal, awesome. But I've had so many hunts that were not successful that are some of my top three favorite hunts, like in my entire life. Nice. Um, you know, cause that's, yeah. That's what I like as a photographer, like that's my goal too, is just like, no matter what, if I'm going out there to document a hunt for a brand or for a person, like it's going to be quote successful, um, no matter what. And that's just, that's my goal. Like, you know, no matter how bad this hunt goes, you know, in terms of like us being us getting one or or us not getting one or, or whatever, like it's going to be successful. Um, that's just my goal. So that's awesome, man. Yeah, you reminded me of that verse. I think it says like Jesus went into the into the wilderness and he was with the wild animals and the angels ministered to him or something. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool, man. Well, yeah, dude, absolutely. It's hundred percent. Like we were not created in um, offices with lighting and air conditioning. We were created in the wilderness, like you said, and definitely something spiritual um, about it. So. But yeah, man, again, it's been really awesome talking to you. Um, I know you're a busy dude, so I'm going to let you go. But um, thanks again for joining us. And where can people find your work or they want to check you out? Oh, yeah, just um, my Instagram is just my name, Luke Dusenberry, um, with a period in between Luke and Dusenberry. Cool. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have anything on my YouTube channel, um, but most of my stuff, I've been doing a lot of stuff the past two years for, for Go Hunt, Leopold. Uh, I did a film for Under Armour Hunt as well cool. last year. Um, but yeah, just kind of mostly most of my Instagram. I don't yeah. know. I'm pretty low key with that. I have links to all those videos as well. I think on my website too, which is just cool. Photography.com. Sweet. So, well, thanks again, yeah. man. Let's, uh, yeah. let's stay in touch. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hunter. I yeah. really appreciate it. Appreciate getting to know you and appreciate you just asking me to be on your podcast. So absolutely, man. Yeah. It's been a good one. For I can't wait to share it in the books. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks, dude.